I shared a vagrant optimism that some of us were making real progress. That we had taken an honest road. And that the best of us would inevitably make it over the top. At the same time, I felt that the life we were leading was a lost cause. That we were all actors, kidding ourselves on a senseless odyssey. It was the tension between those two poles. A restless idealism on one hand and a sense of impending doom on the other. That kept me going. A quote from the author, Hunter S. Thompson. We're coming home. Saw of the World, a fictional adventure told in 100 episodes. <laughs> Episode 87, Mr. Smith Goes to New Washington. Third interview. Mr. Smith. Yes, this is he. Hello. I spoke with you nine days ago. I am the hiring manager at NWCPP. Is this line secure? Yes, sir. Is there anyone who could be overhearing us? Within hearing range of your device? Not to my knowledge. Good, good. Mr. Smith. We have been mulling over your resume in responses to our last few interviews. We are nearing a final decision, but before we confirm, there are three quick questions that we had that we'd like to clear up with you today. May we proceed? Of course. As always, we will be recording this conversation. Of course. Very well. You were a bounty hunter for 12 years. In your last interview, you stressed that you were not a BH in the manner of the public stereotype. Can you unpack that for us? Sure, sure. Uh, I do not carry weapons with me. I have no tattoos. I'm skinny. Haven't been to a gym since I was a freshman in high school. My measures of apprehension are, I would say, 90 to 95% tech-based. I find and capture not by force, but by wit and suspension. Um, would you like me to give examples? No, no, that won't be necessary. There's just this. How do you act when there are technological failings? Right, I, uh, found success and excellence in that very scenario numerous times. Technology doesn't necessarily mean computers. It means leveraging the tools of a house, the architecture of a skyscraper, the dimensions of a warehouse. Okay, okay, very good. Uh, the staff here would like to hear your thoughts on the recent revelations about the cases of the outbreak of the plague. The numbered man. Do you have strong feelings concerning him? I'm... I'm disinterested. What about his followers? The, the ones gathering in Colorado? Outbreaks of radicalism are to be expected. This new cult, if you could call it that, and the various other charismatic leaders rising up, gaining mob power, if you will, they all seem like necessary outcomes. One of the causalities of the lonely plague and the bombs. Yes, yes, very good. Last question, Mr. Smith. Can you state to me any personal relationships you have at this time? Uh, I believe I've provided that information in detail to you. Please restate it. Okay. My 15-year-old nephew lives with me. He's my dependent. Is that going to be a problem? You stated before that you have no girlfriend, no exes, no love interest. That, uh, has changed slightly since we last spoke. What is the nature of this relationship? Just a woman I've seen a few times. Mr. Smith, it is understandable that a hire could have dependents and keep their occupation silent from them, but we regard marital relationships and love interests distinctly. When a married individual joins us, we take on their spouse as well. We believe in a holistic workforce, an environment wherein there's sufficient symmetry between work life and home life. If we hire you, your nephew may stay in the picture, but you'd have to cut this love interest off. 
Are you able to do that at this time? Yes. Unequivocally? Yes. Absolutely. Ah, uh, Mr. Smith, I need you to say the word. Yes. Unequivocally. Yes, good. And there are no other cousins, fathers-in-laws, any other family that you would necessitate continuing communication with? Nope, nope. Parents are dead. Sister, dead. There's a couple aunts, but, uh, I don't even know if they're alive. Haven't spoken to them in 20 years. Good, good. We'll be in touch, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Tour. Welcome, Mr. Smith, to New Washington Center for Public Profiling. Here, as you can see, is the lobby. Your fingerprint will get you in the door. Past here, however, you'll need the variable seven-character code. If you can't get the code right, this monitor here in the lobby can be used to access your secured account. That's your get-out-of-jail ticket. By the way, the Sherman, our security protocol specialist, will take you through a self-destruct code. Say, you're being held hostage, someone's using you to get in. You can type in the code into the monitor here, and self-destruct protocol will go into effect. Wouldn't that kill everyone inside? <laughs> no, no, Mr. Smith. It's not a bomb. Each device in NWCPP has a gel capsule inside it. Self-destruct breaks the capsules, which are filled with a toxin that essentially melts our servers and hard drives. No one is injured. It's perfectly safe. Can't even smell the stuff. Best part is, no one would even know. The operation happens silently. The computers will run on a backup OS, so the bad guys would never be the wiser. And our backup OS is chock full of fake data, so most likely the bad guys would think they got what they wanted, but of course, the intel would be a trap of some sort. Good guys win. Come on, let's show you in. Any other questions about the lobby? So, why this place? Why create a city in the middle of nowhere? We found that the Republic of Chad did many things for us. It's quite centrally located globally, 12 hours from everywhere. And while Chad isn't a powerful country, it is landlocked. Relatively, considering the times, politically serene, and just rather inauspicious in general. As for New Washington, we named it thusly because New Washington is the number one new name in a post-apocalypse, predominantly English-speaking world. So, if you want to find us, and you're looking for New Washington, you'll be distracted by dozens of other New Washingtons. There's even another New Washington in Chad itself, on the other side of the country. We took the liberty to build an extra empty warehouse there, just to throw folks off our scent a little bit. Sneaky. Yes, yes. Quite so, quite so. To your right are offices for management and the like. And this main room here is the missing people department, the MPD for short. Most of our cases run through this department. And the vast majority of our finances are funneled through the work of these good people. A lot of rich folks still haven't found their loved ones, and they're willing to pay for it. Oh, those paneled halls back there are for our MPD field officers. They're almost always empty since our field officers are, as you can imagine, on the field. If you need a cubby to grab some private time, those are usually available. All right, now... Moving on, we don't need to interrupt, but you can hear that sound. The servers on either side of this hallway. That's the Shroud Technology Department, otherwise known hilariously as, you guessed it, STD. Uh, Shroud? Yes, yes. As I'm sure you've noticed, satellite communications these days is frenetic at best. Something or other about chemical clouds rising up from nukes creating a seizure point in the upper atmosphere. I don't know, it's all gobbledygook to me. I'm no techie. But the reality is simple. We need new tech. Shroud is just that. What is it? How does it work? It's a frequency system. Again, I'm not the guy to talk to if you need to know the specs and the housets and whatsits of it all. But it was explained to me like this. Think of a sound, like a, a skinny, squiggly line. Shroud creates, let's call it, a shock wave. 
a teensy weensy shock wave. Now this shock wave doesn't affect anything except these little squiggly sound lines. What happens is, when the shock wave hits the squiggly, it turns it from a one dimensional line to a plane. A long two dimensional plane, like a piece of paper. It's taking the line and smashing it, rolling it into a long line, like rolling out pizza dough. As it extends out as a plane, it spreads out across almost the entire Earth. Our sensors then collect these sound planes and stores them up. So, you're collecting sounds. That's the short of it. No internet, no satellites necessary. No landlines or electrical wires. How many, uh, how many shockwaves does, uh, the shroud put out? Millions a second. Pretty groovy, huh? I guess so. So, the application is that you can listen in on anything in the world? We're getting there, Mr. Smith, we're getting there. The big problem is the big classic. Big data. We simply have too much data to sift through. Too much to organize. Our techies, even right now, are constantly writing out algorithms to figure out productive ways to sort out the information. We've been successful at extracting the human voice from everything else. That was the easy part. But getting, say, a password spoken by someone, getting the computers to figure out what is and is not the spoken password, is tough. Don't get me wrong. We're getting there. Just like all things, it's a work in progress. That's incredible. Incredible. Does anyone else have anything like this? We suspect no. If they did, then we'd hear about it, right? <laughs> huh. Right. But let me let you in on a little secret, Smith. In a few years, we'll really be in business. How's that? Because thoughts have frequencies too. Huh? What now? When you think a thought, Smith, you know, there's an electrical signal. So, right now, as we speak, the shroud is collecting everyone's thoughts. Everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Only thing is that right now it all comes into our computers as junk that our machines don't yet know how to read. It's all like an encrypted message. A Rosetta Stone. Right now it just looks like nonsense. But one of these days, we'll solve the puzzle. And voila, the world will be known to us. You're saying there won't be any secrets anymore. Not if we don't want them to be secrets. That'd be the most powerful weapon on the face of the earth in the history of mankind. No, you see, that's where I have to disagree with you, Smithy. It's not a weapon. It's a fig leaf. It's a white flag. It's the end of pain. How do you mean? What causes wars? Think of the last one. What did it? What caused it? Misunderstanding. Suspicion. The American president would have never launched the missiles if he really knew what the Russians were thinking. We're on the precipice of living in a world without any lies. A world without deceit. Next up, past this hall, is the Special Operations Department, the SOD. The men and women in here usually are working on high-profile cases. People like to hear that a special ops officer is on their own case. If a missing persons file goes 14 days without discovery, the task gets bumped here to SOD, where it'll stay indefinitely until completed. That's where I'll be stationed? Well, that all depends from where you're looking at. Let's keep walking. Here's the thing, Smith. Many of our cases are, for obvious reasons, top secret. Now, when someone comes looking for intel, where's the first place they're going to look? Special Ops. Exactly. So we've found that it doesn't behoove us to keep our most fragile cases within this department. Come now, keep walking. We're almost there. Over here we have the sales department, or SD. You're a quick one. And finally, just beyond SD, we have ORD, the Optics and Relations Department, the branch of NWCPP that you are officially employed under. You hired me for optics? Back here, this room, come with me. This is it, your room. I hope you like the desk, chair, couch, TV in the corner if you wish. Of course, we don't suppose you'll spend much time actually in this room. Hey, I'm Spencer. Yes, and this is Spencer, your assistant. I was told I'd be working alone. Yes, well, Spencer is going to be your point man. 
Spence wears many hats, and he'll be wearing yours for the duration of your stay with us. Excuse me? The company doesn't want you listed as a field agent or special officer. So, you're a field writer. You'll be officially sent out across the world to write stories, gather data, and make press releases. You, of course, won't actually be doing any of that. Spence here will write your stories for you. That way, anyone who's curious about your employment with us will see an arsenal of work under your name. We do ask that you read everything put out with your name on it, just so you actually are aware of the things you're supposed to have written, naturally. And, you must understand, we must pay you in a way that reflects this. 15% of your pay will be taxable and directly deposited into your account as an employee of the Optics and Relations Department. The other 85% you'll have to physically come back to the center to receive. In person. In cash. Understood? Yes. So, what am I actually being paid to do? The Assignment. We believe Jennifer Dash is alive and well. Sir, you shouldn't put it that way. How should I put it, then, Spence? You tell me. We've required sufficient volumes of evidence to reasonably produce a viable candidate for Jen for Dash. Uh, um, can you translate that for me? Mr. Smith, our ears on the streets tell us that... The Shroud. Yes, the Shroud tells us that several large, powerful institutes believe Jen is alive. They could be wrong, and our information has many holes in it. So what if she's dead? It doesn't necessarily matter. If we can find her, or someone that could stand as her believably, someone that could convince the world that she is real, then we would have a very powerful commodity in our hands, no? What would you do with that commodity? We're a simple company, Mr. Smith. We'd sell her to the highest bidder. Spencer, will you indoctrinate Mr. Smith with our current leads? This tour has come to a conclusion, and I must see to other things. Yes, of course. We have four leads. Leads? People we think might be Miss Dash. Why not just use this shroud to find out for sure? The data's all here, but we don't have the instruments yet capable to successfully mine all that information. Millions of people talk about Dash every day. We don't have the capability to sort between talk and reality just quite yet. Early on, we focused a lot of engineers on interpreting the Shroud's data collected from New Zealand. Smugly. Yeah, and from what we've gathered, the elders there believe that she survived the cleansing at the glass house. Huh. We think they faked it. Got a fake body or something. So shouldn't we just stalk Smugly? No. They aren't looking for her. Why not? They think she died in Thailand. Why do they think that? We think they sent her out there to collect the Croatoan. Okay, so why wouldn't we believe them? There's a community taking shelter in the abandoned ruins of Magical Kingdom. The leader at this community is a woman suffering from elephantitis named Elizabeth Schumacher. Sound familiar? Should it? She was one of the, quote, geniuses aboard the Orion. They're the Babbitt's crew. Jennifer Dash's crewmate. Precisely. The Shrouds listened in on her, and she talks as if Jen is alive. As if she came and visited her. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we've got four leads we want you on the ground investigating. Okay. First, an Indian woman named Indira Sudana. An Indian? The thought is, if she's trying to hide some facial work, a skin color change would benefit her. We've tracked some messages from this woman. She knows things that we think only a few people on Earth should know. And she's claimed numerous times to actually be Jen. Okay. Next, in Wyoming, a woman. First name, Jessica. Doesn't have a last name. Okay. In Brazil, a Miss Palacio Asnacia. A wanderer that we think may be hiding Jen. And in Colorado, number 434, a cult follower of the numbered man. Seems to be male. But, uh, again, if she's trying to change identities, a gender change might help. Also, Elizabeth Schumacher's huddled masses at the defunct magical kingdom appear to all be androgynous. So if Jen wanted a change, the lizard might have that capability. A conversation between Miles Faw and Jennifer Dash on the night of Atticus Further's wedding.
What's your proposition? I'd like very much for you to follow me. And where is it that you're going? Jen, I've seen things. I've lived a hundred lives since last we met. It looks like it. Listen, there is more. Okay, there's more. Yet to discover. There's so much more depth left to hunt. What are you talking about? You know, the old Jennifer Dashism. I'm talking about solving the world. Okay, I... I don't follow. We'll do it as equals then. No, I mean, I don't understand what you're talking about. Where have you been all this time? Hunting. Hunting for what? For the winner. The winner? Mm-hmm. You know her name. Say it. With the thrust of Miles's voice, Jen felt compelled, absolutely, to say the name. The Shining Man. Yes. Yes. That's... She. She? <laughs> I've seen more reflections of her. She's more feminine than the world supposes. She's a girl, then. Beyond that. She shines brighter than any man. Okay, back up. You're hunting the Shining Man. You're trying to kill him, I presume? No. At least, I don't think so. Why would you hunt him? Her. Okay, why would you hunt her? Because look at all that she's become. Miles and Jen stood facing each other in the open air at the back side of the reception hall, a.k.a. barn. Jen's back faced a large dumpster not three feet behind her. As Miles said the words, look at all that she's become, he flung his arms out. It was nighttime now, crickets and frogs serenaded the evening moonlight. With his thrust, suddenly, Miles glowed. It started from his fingertips and spread like a wildfire through his body. He was luminescent. No longer did he look haggard, aged well beyond his years. By no means. Now, he was an angel, a being beyond sight and logic. There was an expectation that Jen would cower or feel humiliated in the face of such light and breadth. She was not. She stood poised, controlled, unhumbled unafraid, unashamed. Miles was not accustomed to such stoicism. Somewhere in his thoughts, he remembered that this was the reason he loved her. The Shining Man is bad, Miles. Have you joined sides with the enemy? The light faded from his visage. It started first from his eyes and moved outward squirming like a snake through his orbit, until at last his fingertips refused to burn bright. Returning to the darkness, Miles looked slightly more haggard than he even did before, as if the luminescence trick aged him yet further. Enemy? Miss Dash, you have no right to say that. He eats people's souls! I saw with my own eyes the center destroyed that leprechaun! Miles, a child once made, made, made some bad choices and got crucified for it. Twice over. Don't you lecture me about who's right? There is no right. Don't you see it? I followed the Piper. For years. I know better than you. He adopted me. Raised me. I believed in him. More than anything else in this world. Hook, line, sinker. I believed in the end of the world. The blood of millions is on my hands. If there is a right out there, if there's righteousness, if there's a judge, I'm well past gone already. Damned a hundred times over. But, but, I start to doubt when I met you. I started to doubt. I doubted Piper's call. His endless babbling about creation and Leviathan. You stirred me to change. I thought, maybe, just maybe, we could escape it all. Escape the apocalypse. Run through a door handcrafted for you and for me. I needed an out. And if you're honest with yourself, you needed it too. Just a way out. 
the brokenness is already inside us. I wanted to retreat, find a new world to populate, start the game over, wizened and ready to unmake all the errors I once fell into. Redemption. Hell if I know. Just when she showed up, dragging the rotted corpse of Lilith Babbitt, that showed me the truth. And what is that truth? The creators are broken themselves. Broken to their very fiber. The Shining Man knows this, is intimate with that knowledge. And that truth is power. Power beyond power. So you've joined him. You're on his side. It was never about sides. If it was, she would have killed Piper long, long, long ago. Piper, Adam. He's a weakling, Jen. You must have seen this. I... I saw in him a tired man. Maybe too far gone. But I saw in him something human. Something that at least wanted to be good. Miles choked on those words as Jen spoke them. He tried his best not to show his disgust. He's a weakling. While he toils and dreams in vain, the Shining Man gains and gains and gains and gains and gains. What do you want from me, Miles? I can show you the way. Soon, soon I'll be too strong. You won't be able to see me anymore. I'll be all spirit. I'll pass beyond flesh and blood. I know it sounds crazy, but look at me. I've come into my own. The Shining Man gives you this power? No. She hides from us. She hides from everyone. But I'm... I'm hunting her. Gaining power as I do it. So you do want to kill her. I can't kill her. So you want to join her. I can't join her. She's too powerful to let anyone close. So... What exactly are you trying to do? Be as she is. What does that mean? Come with me. I'll show you. Uh... I don't want to go with you. Just one day. Let me show you for one day. I can't explain it, Jen. It's beyond comprehension. The things I know now, the truths of reality, are beyond logic. That was Adam's fault. He believed the game was all about rules and turns of play. It's not like that. Not at all. It's about imagination. <laughs> Dream it, and it's so. Piper knew that once. How do you think he created her? If I come with you, right now, where would we go? The pit. At the center. Do you remember it? Of course. Think of this world like a giant pit. Or rather, a piece of a pit. If you go further into the essence of the pit, you'll see beyond this world. Beyond reality. You're... you're speaking nonsense. Just... try... Come with me. I don't trust you anymore. It's not about trust. If if you stay behind... I don't want that for you. No, what? No. No, tell me. What will happen if I stay behind? <laughs> Remember? Piper taught that the Shining Man eats identities. But I tell you... It's more fierce than that. What? Every soul is different. So absorption can be a complicated task. Some are like Swiss cheese with holes big enough to sink through. Others? My god, Jen. You wouldn't believe the colors. If I don't follow you, 
my soul will be absorbed. I can show you a different way. You won't have to go through that. It's, it's painful then? There aren't strong enough words to describe the pain. First report. Indira is not Dash. No chance. Okay. Thank you. Please take her out. Did you hear me? She's not Jen. If someone thinks she's close enough to pull it off, the media blitz may one day believe it. It'll go viral and the whole world will bet her. It'll be weeks before everyone decides she's not the real deal. So what? Classic boy who cried wolf scenario. We want to find Jen, or a perfect stand-in, and we want to be the first to do so with authority. If we're the sixth after multiple fake-outs or copycats, then the world will be quick to not believe us, even if we get the real thing. Alright, copy that. Do it, and head to Brazil. Roger. Report 2. Negative from Brazil. What was the old lady hiding? She's a witch. She performs seances and spirits appear before her. Well, one spirit in particular. Some sort of carnival act. If it's an act, it's the best one I've ever seen. I'm an atheist, but this thing has got me doubting that. Besides all that, nothing attached to Dash. Should we keep an eye on her? Definitely. She's... she's mining the spirits for information. If this is at all real, or whoever she's actually speaking to, we want to hear what her intel has to say. Yeah, it's a big 10-4. I'll make sure this shroud keeps filtering for her talks. Listen, we have a new lead. Need you to check this one out before you head to Wyoming. Where? Slovenia. There's a girl. Fits the age range. American living in Europe. Works at a Nixon Chance Casino. She just dealt some guy a winning card. Her name is Jenna Finn. A lot of dots seem to be lining up on this one. Got her connected to Atticus further. Who's he? The boy then dash chased the smuggly. Ah, so, love connection. Something like that. Can you leave tonight? Sure thing. Okay, I'll get the deeds to you while you're in the air. Fly into Trieste, Italy. Roger, talk to you soon. Report 3. Come in. Spencer, there's something going on here. How you got? She's got a tail. I set up some cameras around her flat. Have them on a tripwire to message me whenever there's movement. Anyway, last night there was an intruder. In the middle of the night. Classic burglary stuff. But he fired a couple shots with a silencer. I got there as quick as I could, but he was gone, and so was she. Can Shroud give me anything? We can go back. Listen in and around the place. Great. Give me that data. Report 4. Come in. She bought a boat. Yes, we saw that. Four million dollars added to her Slovenian bank account. A donation from the lottery winner. That was nice of him. Yeah, and uh, she's definitely hooked on Balaam. Takes a pill every four hours or so. Wakes up in the middle of the night just to take it. Where is she staying? With her friends. She hasn't gone back to her flat yet. That knock? Yeah, I swept by there yesterday. The stench is fuming even outside the building. Look, I think we need to nap her now. She may easily overdose or slip through our fingers. Or this third party, whoever they are, might get the upper hand. That's the negative. We need to know who the offending party is. There's no power in having her if someone else of equal authority knows about her. You have to find the intruder, Smith. Find and take care of it. We hired you for a reason. Keep Dash safe and solve the riddle. Understood? 
Yes. Thought you were supposed to be my assistant, Spencer. That's what I'm doing. Recorded call. Come in. Are we patched in? Yes. Yes. We're finalizing the signal momentarily. You'll hear a tone, then his voice. Hello? Who's this? Father Thomas. My name is Mr. Smith. We need your help. Jennifer Dash is alive, and she's in trouble. Hey guys, this is Dante Stack. This has been a big week for us here. Uh, two interesting things happened. One, we released our first, and likely only, video trailer. So this is just a one minute trailer to kind of give the feel of Solve the World, even though obviously Solve the World is an audio only format. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. You can find that on just our front page of DanteStack.com. And also this week, the whole reason I made the video trailer is because I was interviewed on a local news station. You can also find links to that interview on DanteStack.com. Thanks for watching, guys. You can also share the YouTube link of the trailer with friends on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. It would really help me out if you shared that. It's a new way to kind of spread the word and get potentially new listeners on board with us. As always, this week, all the music and sound effects you hear are appropriately attributed at DanteStack.com on our show notes page. All right, see ya.